Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'm gonna to go through a bit of a project run through. So we're starting from when I first started this project to where we're at now. Just gonna go through things quickly. So if you need to actually run through each of those individual videos, not only will I show a picture on this side of what the thumbnail looks like to make it easier, but there's also a description uh, below which has the timestamps and links off to each of those individual videos. So go check out those videos um, individually as well. Now make sure as well to go check out the video I posted yesterday, which was a Q&A just on a few questions of the project, um, which I answer a few things. Happy to still answer more questions, throw them in the comments below. Other than that, if you're not already, make sure you subscribe so you can keep up to date with the CO2 project and all the other projects that I'm doing. Make sure to hit that like button for this video too, but let's get into it and we're gonna start off from the start of this project. All right, so this is the first video. It's a breakdown of what I'm planning on doing in a real brief type of explanation. Now, it coincided with the Team Trees day as well that um, I basically spawned off from that side of things. Um, I think at the end of the day, you know, and I talked about it in this video, trees are really good but we need to extract a lot more CO2 to actually make things a lot better than where we're going. So the next video jumped into how this system works. Now this was a real basic type of video I put together saying how we were going to put together all these tubes, pump air into it, have all the monitoring equipment, all that stuff. Uh, pretty straightforward, most of it's just basically explaining some of the videos that I'm gonna to put together, which you know I actually got through uh, quite a fair few if not all of those videos so um, as I went through over those couple years. Next was a sensor uh, video which was the MQ135 uh, CO2 sensor. Now I just did a explanation how to set it up, wire, code, all that stuff and get some outputs from that. Uh, now as for this sensor I've actually bought uh, replacement sensors already because of uh, the type of sensor that this one is and versus the one that I've actually purchased, which is more an industrial slash uh, research type of sensor, a lot better quality. So we're gonna get a lot better results, but I'll go through that in another video uh, later on next year, 22. But it's a good video to go check out if you wanna know how to set up those sensors and how they work. Next video, we go through the water temperature sensors. Now, same thing. Quite good video, so you can understand how to set them up, wire, code them, all that. Still using these sensors, they're pretty accurate, so you know I'll stick with them. They're cheap and easy to use, and gonna be handy for a lot of data that we're gonna be using for this project in total. Um, we can get those data results quite frequently as well, so we know exactly where the algae temperatures are sitting at, and uh, go from there. Now, next video was a temperature humidity sensor. Now, the temperature and humidity, uh, I've changed how we're gonna do this because these sensors, although quite cheap and common, easy to use, they're not as accurate and probably can't withstand some of the operating conditions that we're gonna be running as well. So um, what I'm gonna do is replace it with some new sensors, um, which I'll show and I've actually already done a video, which we'll see a bit later on, but I'll show how I'm gonna set that up as well in future, but handy if you wanna know how to set these sensors up anyway. So next one, we have a light uh, sensor or a LDR sensor. Um, this sensor basically will just check how's the sun coming out, how much percentage of sun, cloud cover, things like that. We'll align all that data together uh, against you know how we're traveling with temperatures and uh, CO2 levels, all that stuff, which will be handy just so we can see actually, you know maybe we see there's too much sun and it's heating the water up because the temperature of the water is going up too high, which you know that can cause issues as well. So I think quite handy to have uh, with the I guess the light, so we can see exactly how much light's coming in because we've just got one source of light in this setup, which is from the sun. Um, different setup if you had artificial lighting, LEDs, or a combination of lights between the sun and LEDs, um, which I talked about in that Q&A video yesterday. Uh, so you can go check that out if you wanna know how to set those uh, sensors up. 
Next, I set up a uh, video how to do webcam time lapses. Now, this is on a Raspberry Pi. We want to collect the, that time lapse, you know, between each of the days or multiple pictures throughout a day so we can at least see, all right, um, how's it traveling visually, you know, as well as we have all that data to back it up as well. Um, so this was just a quick tutorial on how to set that Raspberry Pi up uh, to do that time lapse. Now, after that, we started to get into a bit more on the tube setup itself. I created these 3D printed brackets, which then had a air bubbler attached to it as well as the um, temperature sensor. So quite handy to have that 3D printer available for that type of work, um, which made things, I guess, a lot easier to, to set up than fabricating something from scratch. Now, I did do a bit of a uh, quick video on how to set up auto programs in the Raspberry Pi. Being that uh, Raspberry Pi is more like a computer, when you open it up, it usually, you know, in most cases, has an operating system or like a, you know, similar to like a desktop look on it. Um, we wanted to set it up so that it would start things like the uh, time lapse and any other programs that might be uh, installed on the Raspberry Pi, you know, especially when we start looking at all this data, how do we collate it, how do we send it to like a data server, how do we, um, yeah, how, how do we get all these programs to start? This is one of the options is to, to actually get it to automatically start on boot up of the Raspberry Pi. Next, we had a water temperature sensors, which I showed in that previous video uh, earlier on at the start of this one. Uh, same sensors, we just had all four of them. Now we need to calibrate them because there is that type of difference with resistance, things like that. We wanted to make sure that they were exactly the same so our results are the same. We don't want to have uh, skewed results because of a calibration um, type of error. So just taking that into account. Next, we wanted to make sure with the air that was pushed in through the tubes that there was a balance between the air. We didn't want too much in one tube versus you know, not enough in another because of, let's say, a um, bump in the, the line or the line um, being too long. So it was more just balancing that. All right, so next we have the Mega Sensor Shield. Now, one of the sensor recording boards that I'll be using is a Arduino Mega, which has a lot of digital pins uh, and analog pins as well. So we can get a lot of inputs on that. Now, I was just showing how we can set this board up and also you know, how we can get voltages um, connected up from external power supplies, things like that. Next, we put the tubes together, sealed them up. So that way we had uh, basically lines running in and out of them uh, and also that air bubbler and also the temperature sensor all secured away, locked in place. Uh, and yeah, next I did a bit of a video on stacking the boards for the Arduino. Now, because we had that sensor board I was talking about before, that allows all the, sen the sensors to connect up to it. But at the same time, there's not really any spots for you know, adding resistors because when you do a lot of sensors, you need to have inline uh, or, or type of resistors that connect up in the circuit. So, you know, if you look at each of those individual, how to set up this uh, sensor, you'll see there's certain things that I'll talk about, you know, how you have to put in resistors, things like that. That second board or that board in between will be necessary for, you know, adding those resistors in. Um, as for, you know, why I really created this video is because it's not standard to stack boards like this. You can't really do it once you put one on top. Most of the time, it kind of stops you from being able to put another board. So I've just kind of showed a way of doing it so that we can keep on attaching you know, multiple boards, keep on stacking it up, and you can keep going as much as you wanted to. So next, after that, I put together a bit of a box for the monitoring equipment, all of the Raspberry Pis, Arduinos, things like that, and where initially I was thinking the air pump could go. This board I'm still using to hold a lot of the equipment on. I have changed the design a little bit because the air pump doesn't necessarily need to be in there anymore, just because of the uh, the enclosure that I made later on when you see I initially designed this potentially to just be fixed on a wall um, it's changing now so we don't really need as much of this and also some of those sensors there are also changing too but you know I'll be still keeping the box to just keep it nice and tidy and have everything packed away in one type of box um, if for some reason I need to disconnect take the whole thing out I can 
put together a bit of a battery pack to you know act as a a bit of a um, power supply for this equipment because it's five volts in theory works quite well because when you know you have that backup battery supply um, it'll feed those boards and run fine and keep all the monitoring equipment running even if there's power loss for some reason only downside that I found with this board in particular and I've kind of changed it a bit now is that this board wouldn't allow to have input and output at the same time um, it was kind of more like a uh, what are you one of these type of uh, power bank type of setups so it wasn't really suitable for uh, what I'm going to use in this project so it was good to put together and show you how to put together and stuff but I'll be changing it to one that has input and output uh, at the same time as battery charging ability which I've got um, some electronics that I'll go through uh, and do those videos as well separately so you know you can see how they're set up too next sealed up this whole tube put a output um, drain on it as well so we can get that biomass out the bottom um, and yeah just bang those tubes together sealed them up they're ready to go after that we looked at the wiring harness so you know putting together that wiring harness to have the lines that run between where the monitoring equipment is all the way up to where the sensors are itself a uh, bit of a, a messy thing but uh, got it done eventually now next was creating the uh, enclosure for the tubes itself that box uh, which is all recycled you know reused materials um, basically put it all together uh, put the four tubes in and made it you know suitable for the setup that we're gonna, you know going to use in this test um, and then permanently installed them in the next video had them all fixed in painted everything was all set up the way that I wanted it um, and then a video which was basically just explaining where I'm going to be placing the system because initially you know was I going to put it on the shed was I going to put it on the house and I figured a bit of a Goldilocks scenario where it ended up being best in the middle of um, between the house and the shed but you can go check that video out to see why I chose that um, and there's a lot of other things I talk about there about you know solar uh, versus the grid and you know how I'm going to get the data via the you know wired wireless internet things like that and noise and accessing that equipment uh, after that which then kind of led me to the way of actually creating a stand for this unit uh, built the, the stand similar all repurposed remade uh, reused materials so once that was put together I then next video added a few more parts to it wheels painted it um, closed it in with uh, some some insulation things like that uh, and attached the actual co2 scrubbing unit to it we then um, added some some noise cancelling not pads and stuff it was more just carpet and it cut back a bit of noise as well so which was good um, made it so that even when the pump was in there the air pump the vibrations the sound couldn't really hear outside of the unit and I've got you know a bit of a sound comparison there in that video so um, yeah once it was all connected up we, we actually had the you know the the air pump running for the first time in there too so which was which was good um, after that I created a bit of a setup in the top where I was looking at putting the sensor equipment uh, and also hooking up a lot of those hoses one-way valves things like that all good and well the way I set it up um, unfortunately I've kind of changed the design of that that's going to be kind of completely different and that's primarily because of the sensors that are purchased online which you know have um, basically their own enclosure in a way so you don't we don't need to have separate boxes to put them in whether or not I'll still have some form of a box like this I don't know I'll, I might change it completely it did it did become quite um, I guess cramped with a lot of the wiring and all that stuff once I got in there so you know it may actually be better to not have these because they take up a bit of room but um, you know it's all process and you know trying to work out what works what doesn't work so you know I'm happy to change things as I go I'm not just stuck in my way of um, doing the same thing so yeah after that I put in a power distribution board um, not only do we have light uh, inside the box now which is handy we've also got the uh, power transformers in there which 
which I initially had a 12 volt for the air pump and then um, also a 5 volt converter which I'm going to change a bit later on but uh, after that I installed a web camera which you know I explained how doing that time lapse this web camera then now overlooks those four tubes so that we can see daily what's going on what's the change in color all that stuff permanently installed that light sensor which I explained how to set up in another video that light sensor is installed in the top of the box so we know exactly what's hitting that tube um, or the tubes I guess yeah so that's all set up and wired in I then created uh, the next part of the distribution wiring setup which was uh, basically going from that bottom wiring harness that I installed uh, that now goes into a separate box which that box then has breakouts to connect all of the sensors into direct so we don't have to you know wire them up we can just kind of plug and play type of thing makes things a bit easier um, when we connect up uh, to you know all these different sensors after that I decided to change over the 5 volt uh, converter which was from 12 volt to 5 volt I actually put in a separate transformer altogether uh, that way you know just to make sure I've got enough capacity there and um, tolerance in you know what happens if I change uh, things add more things in there you know I'm gonna have that you know, it's it's right to just keep adding more and more it's not gonna overload it, it does make it a little bit le um, more inefficient because it's probably not really drawing that much but at the end of the day well, I'm not really fussed about the inefficiencies of the transformers or transform power loss things like that um, because it's a test scenario um, after that we ended up jumping into a video on the HTU21D sensors which will be a temperature and humidity sensor I'm going to be replacing those initial uh, sensors that I was talking about earlier on in the video just because they're just a lot better um, to use and they're you know better operating conditions things like that only downside is it's a 3.3 volt um, sensor so I'm going to need to do a a step down for 5 volt down to 3.3 but I've already got that sorted um, and I'll need to do that video at some point in the future all right so other than that I have posted in the community page uh, a few things around some of the changes or extra sensors things like that this is one of them we've got an air flow sensor so we can actually see what the airflow is like which will be handy too if um, you know to know if say the air uh, bubblers are getting a bit blocked things like that we'll actually know you know how the airflow is getting affected too which may not even change at all but at least we'll know so that's going to be handy other than that we're just going to have a bunch of uh, new co2 sensors which i'm going to have to show you how to set them up and also wire and code them considering there is literally no details other than their basic use that they had when they um, the company actually um, created them and set them up which was for their I believe their own separate units they rarely sell them separately they're more sold in like a kit with everything in it which wouldn't have suited me but um, yeah so th that makes things a bit more interesting because I kind of have to program these from scratch um, which is great um, but at the same time you know a lot of it's all based around using the uh, 2IC method um, I, the I2C method um, which you know I have done some videos in the path on that as well so you can kind of understand where some of these videos might not make sense as to why I might be doing them um, and how they tie in with CO2 but you know either there is some type of understanding there of why they're connected and you know how they connect otherwise it could just be a completely random video that I'm just putting out so you know that's just how it is so hopefully that's a quick breakdown of the videos from the start to where we are now you know I'm hoping to scale up on videos as we get into next year or 2022 um, now I haven't talked about another thing as well in regards to a certain competition um, the reason I don't talk about it much is because there's you know and, and I have um, I do know that they're actually you know quite 
you know, liking for people to talk about the competition and things like that. The only thing is I need to get approval for some of the videos to talk, you know, about it, you know, for social media. They sound like they're pretty on board to have that, um, you know, um, people talking about it and stuff like that, depending on what it is. But I need to get approval before I really post some of these things. You know, I don't want to be posting it outside of um, getting that approval. So trying to rush through some of these videos and get them done um, doesn't really fit in the timeline. So, you know, maybe as we get into next year, I'll be able to have a bit more of a conversation about that, talk about where things are at. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to wait and uh, see. But there is some cool stuff going on in the background that... Um, I am yet to talk about so one day I'll talk about it and we'll uh, get into it then other than that um, hopefully this is a good breakdown for people who either have been watching along wanted a bit of a recap uh, or people that are completely new to the co2 project so if you like the video make sure hit that like button and also subscribe helps out a lot watch the videos um, that also helps a lot with the channel too and getting more and more people to see this project and more and pe more people get involved which is great um, but other than that as always thanks for watching and we'll see you next time